Hey guys, um, it's Kimberly and I um, coming back tonight with this project that we were working on last week. This is a high boy dresser. Um, it's also, it's very vintage obviously. You can generally tell that by the hardware on this piece. So from what you can see, I've done quite a lot since we were here last. Last time, hey Michelle, how are you? Thank you for joining me tonight. Um, so this, this particular piece, you guys saw me take the veneer off of it. So this is the results of the after. So obviously I've been busting it, getting this piece ready for tonight's broadcast. So I'm gonna pull it over on the side. I'm gonna let some people join us tonight. If you're joining me, um, I appreciate it. I thank you for joining, thank you for watching. If you are new to this page, my name is Kimberly. I'm with Unique Finds and Furniture Designs here in Kernersville, North Carolina. And I am a furniture artist featuring Dixie Bell chalk paint products. So um, we welcome you. We thank you for joining our broadcast. And um, all these products, if you're in our local area, are located at um, the Cooper Vincent Village, the Nook and Cranny, and also at Habitat for Humanity, Kernersville. And also you can jump on our um, web page and you can order from there as well if you're interested or out of our area and we can ship to you. So all of that is possible. You can go on our Facebook page and find our web page and go from there. So we appreciate y'all coming in with us and um, I'm going to jump in. Uh, if you have not seen the previous video, they are on our Facebook page at Unique Finds and Furniture Designs as well as over on our YouTube channel under the Vintage Queen. So you can find these tutorials um, out there and I do them sort of start to finish. So my goal is to teach you how to use these products to get the best results possible. Um, and so in those techniques is what I try to uh, demonstrate in these videos. So I'm gonna, if you guys um, are joining us and you didn't know, this piece is a, um, a solid mahogany piece it was in the cherry fashion color on the um, before and all the veneer was peeling so um, I believe the veneer on this dresser you can always go back on that video and look at that but this dresser this top drawer this drawer this drawer this drawer this drawer was fine and this drawer and then the whole other side of this piece so I'm gonna pull this piece around and um, you guys will be able to view how we have managed to change. Obviously you can tell now that this is in a more complete state and maybe I need to move my, um, I'm gonna move my tripod back a little further so possibly you can see a little bit more of that piece. And I'm gonna pull you down just enough so that hopefully you guys can get a better view. You can see in the, um, and I'm just gonna put you out here to the side just a tad because this dresser is also the make to this. So if you look at this dresser on this side, you can also see where I have come in. I'm working two projects at one time. Most of the time I do that. This is my workspace in my area that I do all my refabricating and repurposing of these vintage finds. So um, this is why these pieces um, have been sort of, um, what I wanna say, pushed to the side. These are the last two of a project that I have been working on for multiple pieces. So I have come in and as you can see on this drawer, the veneer is fine. It's still attached and wasn't coming up. But all the rest of the drawers, the veneer was coming off. So I took it off the same way I took it off on this larger one behind us. And you guys, like I said, can jump over on that um, YouTube channel or on our Facebook page and you can see that tutorial on how I got the veneer off and, um, and what I do to prep it for paint. So this is in the raw state. This is what the wood would look like underneath that thin veneer that was placed on these pieces back in the day. Um, these are older pieces of furniture so obviously they have some issues that are going on with them. Obviously you can see the veneer on this side looks fine. I don't try to pull it off if it's fine, only if it's loose. If it's loose, I pop it off or make repairs depending on the need of that piece. 
Now tonight, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull this around so you guys can continue to see. If you're here with me, let me know you're here so that I can welcome you. Um, I did paint this uh, prior. I cleaned it all with our white lightning cleaner. Um, again, that video is out there. After I cleaned it really well, then I came in and I bossed it. The reason I bossed it, you can see on this piece behind me, it's red. Anytime I see anything of this color or this vintage era, you're going to have to boss it or you're going to have bleed through if you go with a light color like I did here. This is the Dixie Bell um, drop cloth. And so you can tell that if I had not put this boss on there, it would have bled back through in a pink fashion because of the color of this. So anytime you see a piece of furniture that looks like this, you want to clean it really well and then you're going to boss it. And the boss that I use is Clear Boss. I did put it in this um, phyllo bottle so that it was a little easier for when we do workshops, but that's what's in here. This boss also comes in white, so if you wanted to use a white boss, you can. But I used clear on my piece behind me, but you definitely want to uh, implement your boss on anything that is this color. Red, um, cherry, mahogany, those, those woods will bleed through your paint on you. You'll get it all painted and look gorgeous like this and then you'll walk out tomorrow and it'll be pink. So if you don't want your, your vintage furniture going pink on you, and it's because of the stain that they used in these pieces. So that's something that's a, a very must if you are painting like me doing older pieces and going over with the light color. So I did several colors here. So I came in here and I put in, this is our white lightning cleaner that I was speaking of that I cleaned the piece with. Must, must things. Always clean your piece and always boss if you're working with red type wood. So um, I did paint the top part of this in the drop cloth and the other I painted in the um, sawmill gravy. So it's a little bit, or it kind of looks like the French linen, so it's a, kind of a mixture of those two colors. They are Dixie Bell paint products. And then, I don't know if you can see the bottom, but I did come in on the bottom with the tea rose. So, hey Wendy, how are you girl? So that is on this piece as well. I really love the vintage look on this, and I'm going to pull it around to the side. Maybe I won't knock it off. So here's the side of this piece. So I did put some tea rose stripes on it. I did add some um, decorative uh, accents on the side as well, just um, kind of to work with the transfer I'm about to apply. So I don't know if you guys can see that overly well on your, on your, um, on your end, but anyway, um, our color is kind of off maybe in here. So what I'm gonna be doing tonight is I'm gonna be coming in and again, I am uh, got a Prima Design transfer that I'm going to be using, and um, this one is just, I want to pull it up here so you guys can see. So this is the transfer that I'm going to be putting on this piece, which I think will go nicely with the style of this dresser. So both pieces, as you can see on this side of me, this dresser used to look like this where I had to pop all the veneer off and repair it so that we could paint it and now put our, apply our transfer. So I did actually want to do something different with this piece, but in mid ship, as I got, as I tell you guys often, I aborted the, um, aborted the mission and went a different route. And um, sometimes that happens. And uh, so, it did occur on this one. So once in a, every once in a while, I will get started on something and decide, mm, you know, I think I want to go a different route with it. And tonight you are seeing, this is what I, I did do that on this piece. Now I did come in and sand the sides of this really lightly and it gave it a real buttery smooth feel. So if you're wanting a um, not quite as textured feel in your paint, just knock the, sh the um, little bitty edge off of it with our little thin sanding paper sponge. It looks like this. Yes, this one's well loved, but I use this for everything. So, I mean, I will use this a hundred times over again. doesn't feel like there's anything left on it. 
but it's just enough to knock down the, the uh, roughness of your chalk paint. That's what gives you that baby smooth feel. And I have done that on the side, but I do not do it on my drawers or where I'm gonna apply my transfer. I always wait until after my transfer is applied because that rough feel is an adhesion and it helps adhere your transfer. So that's a little tidbit secret. Just leave it in its rough chalky state because it's gonna grab your transfer better. And um, it's gonna help you out a whole lot. If you were to sand it and it'd be super smooth, then um, you might have issues with your, and that might be where some people, I know some people have been having some issues with their transfers and um, these transfers are not cheap, so that might help you guys a lot if you do not sand it prior to putting your transfer on. Leave it good and rough, and then once your transfer is on it, then you can sand all around it. And then that will soften it, and it'll be baby smooth again. So just kind of a little bit of info there. Now this transfer came in several sheets. So um, back in the day, they used to come in one long sheet. You had to just try to hold it up there and work your transfer. That's not the case now. So um, if you're joining me, thank you for joining me. And we are continuing on this piece that we were working on. So this is four different sections of this particular piece. And so that's what I'm going to be doing tonight. I'm actually going to be applying these four pieces. So you're going to have to bear with me. You guys know it's a rub-a-dub-dub -dub when you start working with your transfers. It does take a little bit of patience because it doesn't all go on instantly. And I want to kind of scale it to this piece. So I may end up, I have contemplated whether or not I'm going to do the drawer differently but I want to make sure I get my transfer where I want it first, and then I will work my way down the piece. So obviously I have this little lip right here. The lip is going to be a little tricky. They always are. So again, um, I did come in though, and I did etch around the edges, so I lightly distressed it as well on this particular one. So let me get my transfer organized here. Get my first one so I can see how it goes. And then that. Okay. So I get it all lined up so that I get it, I put it on correctly and set those pieces out of my way. So this is our first piece and obviously I'm only going to be on my hands and knees trying to apply this one maybe. I might could get up in the air. Let me point you guys up a little bit since I'm going to be working up a little bit higher. Now these come with your handy dandy little stick. So this is what you get to work with. This is their applicator tool. And um, for one thing, I wanted to see where I'm going to join these pieces. So a lot of times you can come in here and just get you a piece of tape and kind of tape it where you want it. And I'll kind of show you guys that so you know. Let me just grab me some tape here. Because you know, I don't always have everything right where I need it. So, so what you can do is just kind of scale it. Let's see, if we brought it up here, this will give you an idea if you're doing it on your own. So I go light with the tape. Now bear in mind, it's been kind of damp and cool and all that funky stuff here as usual in North Carolina. So the temperature with the curing of my pieces might take a little bit longer to cure. That's why you would see pieces covered behind me here. So I just wanna kind of get a rough guesstimate in my mind where this is going to be. So you see, you kind of got to line them up as like a puzzle. So you see where that stem is and then that stem. So you will be working it and laying it over. So this is a kind of a good way to see how far down you want to start your piece, start your transfer. 
So that way it gives you kind of an overview of where you're going with your piece and how far down your piece it is. So that way you're about the same distance from the top as you are at the bottom. So this just kind of gives you an overall guesstimate, if you will, where you want your piece to be. And since that comes up a little bit more, I'm gonna pull it down just so you guys can see just kind of the idea of how you kind of get these lined up when you're putting them on. So I want that one to be approximately that far from the bottom. So I'm gonna shimmy and see the uh, end of this is right here and then the end of this is down there. So it's gonna have to come down the tad, which may give me a whole drawer. So if my whole drawer is open, so it's gonna have to come down quite a ways just kind of show you guys if you're working your piece and you're fitting them, matching them up. Goes there. Well, it's definitely like putting a little puzzle together. And I'm not going to like that because it's going to be right over that bar, which is going to be a lot of fun. Not really, but we'll say it is. So we might want to bring this piece down. I think I'm going to since this is a taller dresser, because I really want my transfer to fit my dresser properly, so I might end up doing something different, like I did down here, I did some stripes on the bottom of this, I could do stripes at that top one. It just really is your preference on exactly how far up your piece you want to go, or if you want to actually put anything on that top dresser. So. Just kind of play with them, get them to, you know, sort of where you think you like it to be. And um, just kind of play it out on your piece. Just, this is kind of how I kind of measure it because it just gives me an eyeball idea of how far up I go. I really don't want to be that far up. I want to be kind of right in this area. So that's just how you do it these transfers. They do take a little time and patience. Again, kind of like pulling off your veneer. It does take a little bit of time and patience. It doesn't happen overnight. So you guys can kind of see how that would look if you were putting it in that area. So I'm just going to kind of, as I always do, I'm just going to kind of wing it. But that gives you a good idea of how you can go in and just kind of stage where you want your pieces to be. And I kind of want to go a little lower with mine because I don't really want, I'm worried about that spot right there. As you guys know, I think I'm going to go kind of in the middle here and get started. I think that's where I'm going to get rolling. It's, it's all up to your preference on how you want to do it for your piece, but I kind of try to size them up. So these are on a Mylar strip. These always take a little bit of extra time. And like I say, it has been a little bit damp in our area. And this one is attached, which I've not seen be glued before, but anyway. So you can see they are super, super thin. So here's the Bylar sheet that I'll be applying. And this is just a backing. So these are definitely fun. They do take a little bit of time to get used to. Let me get all of that off and just kind of come in here. I kind of have an idea in my head where I'd like for it to be. So again, you are kind of working, let's see, it seems like to me this piece, the floral kind of, let me look real quick here kind of flows so you can always refer back to your transfer on how they how they line up so I really kind of want this flower to come over a little bit because um, in this transfer it flows back toward the other side so it might want to come over I don't know how far up I want to go. I think I want to go. 
maybe right in here. Just try to get it right where I think I want it. If the wording is perfect on here, then the other end's going to go off to the side a little bit. So, just kind of line it up relatively close. Of course, my daughter and I, she always tells me, you got to eyeball everything. So, I'm going to stand up for this so that you guys can kind of see. And I apologize, but I am going to have to stand up a little bit so that I can get up here and get this booger to get started. Like I said, now I did leave my paint at a state of being rough. These are, like I said, a little bit testy. Just depends. I've had this particular transfer for a little while, so it might be a little more tenacious to get off. Do not. I'm just going to see if she'll hold for a sec real quick. And I'm just going to kind of put my tape here. That'll kind of help hold her in place if my tape would stay. So then I'm just gonna come in here and rub like the dickens. Because that's what it takes. These little rubbing sticks. Like I said, this particular transfer I've had a while so it's been kind of sitting and waiting. Once you get a section of it to stay, then it becomes maybe a little bit easier. And you see, I'm kind of just working it in this edge. Just got to kind of work it. You gotta push hard, you guys. These are a little bit tough to put on. I love them, but they do take a little bit of time. So you guys probably don't wanna watch me do this all night, because it will take me a little while to put this on. Hopefully, it won't mess up. But I just kind of wanted, I changed directions on this piece when um, I had a different idea I wanted to go with. But it didn't want to go with it as well as I wanted it to. So sometimes that happens. And if it does, it's okay. Just jump ship, is like, <laughs> which is exactly what I did. I just totally decided to do something totally different with it. Just kind of, hey, Kathy, how are you, girl? Sorry I didn't see you. I was busy rub-a-dub-dubbing on this piece. Just rubbing. Don't mind me. I'm a mess tonight. Now, I'm going to try to get this in here. These curves are always hard. I always make it hard on myself because I'm working on a curve here. When you're working with curved edges, it does kind of make it a little bit more of a pain, but you can do it. Now I'm going to use my fingernails, which I shouldn't be doing, but I do. Try to wedge it in that, in that spot so that it'll stay. And I'm sorry I have to have my back to you, but in this case, it's kind of hard to be looking at you and working at the same time but you guys get the idea the goal is to show you so that you can have better luck with your transfers 
Down here, obviously, I'm going over the lip, so it's going to be a little tenacious going over the lip. And then when I attach this other piece, it's going to be a nightmare coming down along it. But it can be done, so don't give up. It's, you want me to pull you in? I don't know if you guys can see from that distance. Let me see if I can pull you all in a little bit so you can kind of see how this is going on. Just bear with me. I'll drag you all up in here. So you can get a little better look. See, how's that? Don't look at me, because I know I'm a mess. Been outside walking dogs in the rain and all this mess that we've been having this past couple, few hours here in um, North Carolina. And I don't think my brother's watching. I know they're in Tennessee. They had some bad storms out near him. Um, as far as I know, everybody, is okay but we had some pretty good size good twister going on over that way so you guys as you can see I'm just working it over this edge I hope you're in enough to be able to see what I'm trying to do here and it's always hard when you have vintage pieces because when it comes to a vintage piece they have curves and when they have curves, that means you're going to have a little bit more of a challenge. I don't always suggest um, if you're a newbie and you've not put these transfers on. My arm's getting tired. Sorry, guys. Before, don't, oh, don't start on a piece that has an edge like this. Go for something flat to get your, get your bearings with your transfers first. And that way you won't be disappointed because they can be a real bear when you're working with curves, which my vet always said, you like that, you like a challenge. Says that about my crazy horse. You wouldn't have any other one. And I'm like, yeah, sometimes I would. <laughs> but anyway, my arm is tired already. You guys see, I'm, my arm's already tired. Hey Karen, how are you? Were you at the Dixie Bell workshop? I'm putting this transfer on. I so wanted to go, you guys. I so wanted to get to Florida and go. But I really had to um, weigh it out with other things going on. And what I would be able to do physically and financially and all that fun stuff. I really wanted to be there, and I know a lot of cool people got to go and have a good time. I wanted to go down there and meet Mr. Dustin. And, you know, everybody really, but you know we all have the ones that we kind of lean toward that we kind of like to learn from Cece and Brandy and you know, all those highly talented, wonderful people. Ooh, I think I might be done with that one. My arm, my arm is bothering me, but it always does. I'm gonna do right up here at the very top where I think we've got some, somebody hanging. So, maybe you guys can see. So this isn't one of the older version transfers. I think it's still out there in publication, if you will. So it's a little different and I see this one's trying to come up. Sometimes that'll happen. You guys just rub them in. I thought it was up, but there was a little spot right here. Just kind of play with it. Give yourself a little bit of time because you're going to need to rest your arm. It's hard for me to tell if it's completely. But I think she's pretty good. So when I do the transfer, like I said, I do leave... I think she's pretty good. 
So I, I do try to leave the um, paint porous, if you will. Now I'll come back in and I'll sand over it because I'd like for it to probably look, I always like for it to look a little bit rough. What I mean by rough is I mean weathered because obviously this isn't a brand new, a brand new piece of furniture. But it, it is, it is in a, it's in a brand new fashion. Now, there's a little piece coming up right there. So basically, you guys see, now when I come along in here, I will come along with a razor blade or a, let me grab it real quick. Most of the time I come in with a razor blade and sometimes I'll come in with a real sharp pair of scissors because sometimes that works really good. And I'll just come along this edge and I'll just come along and just kind of slice it. Because obviously this is where my drawer is gonna open. And up here I don't have that problem, but I will with the next piece. And I will open my drawer and then rub underneath of it. Because these um, drawers overlap one another. You see how that does? It overlaps this other drawer. So I always want to make sure that this is this is down. So just come in on top of it and just kind of work it down. And so this, these drawers are interesting because it's the style of dresser. So they come in over the top. So there's your first little part, and this is a part of four. Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate you saying that. And um, move you back a little bit, maybe. I don't know, does that mess up the camera? I don't know if it gets a little bit squirrely when I do that. And now, let's see. Now we have this piece that we're gonna come up. You see, this is gonna be a little bit of a bear coming down over this part, but it won't be too bad. I tried to size it so that this would be up a little bit higher and I wouldn't lose all of my flower in this fold right here, because this fold's gonna be the no fun part. So just, that's just the way it is with this particular piece that I'm working on. So again, I just kind of pull my mylar off of my backing. And like I say, this piece has been, this has been around a while in my workshop. So I think climate has something to do with it. So I'm getting my stem lined up on this. This is where I want to get my stem lined up here. So that it looks like it's just one solid piece. So this is where I'm going to work first. I'm just going to kind of work my way over down my piece. And I'm just using the tool that comes with these little transfers. Now, I know this one's not a real bright, fancy transfer, but I chose the T-Rose because if you see in this floral, we have all these colors sort of come into play and I left my hardware just like it is, which is very unusual for me. You guys know I normally paint my hardware, but I left my hardware because I wanted it to sort of, you know, play off these colors that was in this transfer. So when I painted my piece, I painted it in correlation, correlation with my transfer. That was the purpose of painting it with these colors. So I'm just gonna come in here and work on not worrying about anything below. I'm just gonna worry about what I'm working with here to get these guys in place. And I will be coming in and putting, um, I do come in and put a top coat over these once I apply them. I do come in with the, the clear coat satin. I always come in with clear coat satin first before I put my gator hide on, guys. I never put my gator hide directly over the top of my transfer, and that could also be an issue that some people are having with their transfers. 
I'm just trying to address some transfer issues because I've had questions from a lot of ladies that are putting their transfers on that are having trouble with their transfers peeling back off. The only case could possibly be is maybe that it's not porous when you're applying it and um, putting your gator hide. Some people are having their gator hide issues, but pulling their transfer, bubbling their transfers up. Now I've not had that problem, but I always seal my transfer down first with the clear coat satin. So maybe that is a maybe that's part of the trick. Just gonna throw that out there at you guys, just in case that that's a difference that you guys are maybe not doing. I don't know. So um, maybe try it and see how it goes because every transfer I've put on, I have never had an issue um, with my transfer lifting. The only time I have a transfer lifting issue is like right now while I'm putting it on, trying to get it on. And it's not really lifting off of my piece, it's, you know, the, the mylar. So, hopefully that'll help address some of those questions for you guys. My main goal is to try to get this floral to line up. So I'm just working up above this because this is going to be, it may go on kind of crackly. And I'm expecting that, so I'm not going to be surprised if it gets a little crackled when I'm trying to put it over this rail. Because the rail will be a little trickier. I think it's coming come off a little bit harder some, too, because this transfer has been around a little bit. So I'm going to stand up because now I'm come, going to be coming over this rail. And so when you are coming over the rail, just do one section at a time. Just don't get in a hurry and just stay on one section until it's lifted and then kind of work your way down. I think I'm good all up in here. And so now comes the bend. And so now I'm just going to kind of fold it down with my fingers and try to get my bend. So it is going to be a little bit tricky in your folds. Folds are always a little bit tricky, but if you just hang in there doing your folds, it just really looks, makes the piece look really cool once they once they roll down on so just take your time rub for your life pretty much and get your fold and then i've got another fold in here which is a pain So, again, so the writing is going right over into the fold. This is definitely the tricky part. But it's okay. And if it looks a little weathered, don't freak out. Got to get the tool. It'll be fine. You can see how hard I'm having to rub to get those folds. And I don't really want to lose ground around that here. I'm just going to try and bring it on over this fold by hand. This is a tricky, tricky spot. But just keep going, don't, don't give up, it'll come off. And then you have the next fold. 
So this is a tricky spot here with all these folds on this particular piece. Work it one step at a time. And she'll come off. So not only do I have that fold, I have this fold. And I have another fold. This is all folds up under here. Lucky, lucky me. So I'm using my fingernail, kind of cut it in there. Just bear with it. ones are a little bit on the tricky side because of their all the folds in my dresser and hopefully y'all won't have that on your dresser Sometimes you just can't rub hard enough when you're doing these. So I apologize, I know it's lengthy. Maybe if I can get this one off. Since I have two more, I won't bog, bog y'all down with it. But I will just kind of get you this far and kind of show you how it rolls over that edge. So hopefully you guys can see that. Um, it's uh, going to be a little bit of a pain, but just bear with it. You can come back in after you get done and kind of rough it up, which I will. I'll come in with sandpaper and sand all around all these little edges that might bother me and kind of rough it in. And um, it'll be, it'll be just fine. So when you're working with a piece like I am, because I wrapped it over that lip, which is kind of a pain in the crickets. So if you are working on a piece and um, you don't want to come down over something like that, then just come in and um, obviously work on a flatter piece of furniture. It'll make it easier on you since I'm going over all these drawers. But anyway, that's the idea of how you get your transfers. To, um, take off just be patient with them it's just like when you were working with your veneer and pulling your veneer off it just takes a, a little bit more time and a little bit more effort when you're doing it so just um, hang in there don't give up if you um, if you mess up once in a while it's not gonna be that bad if you really hate it and you think it's um, crackled or whatever just put crackle over it and give it a crackled effect and nobody will know that you weren't going for the crackled effect anyway so that works as well so you can always do that um, once you're done and let it just crackle and then once it dries you can seal it down with your clear coat satin before you put your gator hide on and that'll kind of seal it down and give it even more of a crackled effect which will really weather it down and then um, you can come in, which I'm probably going to do, and come in and dirty up around the edges of this piece and kind of um, 
Which you could do that with the wax, you can do that with the Dixie Dirt, you can do it in numerous ways, but if you want to go in and you want to add some more um, depth or texture to the sides of these once you get your transfer on, that's all something that you can do as well. So I just wanted to come in and show you guys a little bit more about our transfers, a couple of tidbits, um, leave your leave your um, chalk paint chalky because that's going to help the adhesion between the two then um then afterwards sand it and put your uh, clear coat satin on it so that's good for this evening um we'll be starting this vanity behind me probably thursday evening i'll be working on it in in the interim so um jump back on with me on thursday you'll be able to see some of the um the techniques that we'll be using to um, apply our paint to this piece next. So thank you for viewing. Um, thank you for uh, joining us. Um, jump over on our YouTube channel. Check out some of our um, previous uh, broadcasts and we will see you guys again here Thursday evening. Have a blessed night. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.